Anytime we find a new gene for ALS, uh, it brings us a little bit closer to understanding what is actually going wrong in ALS. Uh, so far, we've identified probably about 15 genes which contribute to ALS, and in, for every single one of those, uh, it, it enlightens us a little bit more about what is going wrong in ALS patients, and as a result, the more we learn, the closer it brings us to a therapeutic treatment. One, two, three. This discovery wouldn't have happened without the Ars Bucket Challenge. Uh, the discovery of NEC1 was very um, relied on Project Mine, and we were uh, wanted to start Project Mine actually back in, in 2014 before the Ars Bucket Challenge occurred. But at that time, uh, we had approached the ALS Association, and they were very, very interested in actually funding uh, Project Mine within the USA. But unfortunately, at that time, they didn't have enough financing to really back us. Uh, however, once the Ice Bucket Challenge did kick in, they were able to come to us and actually say, we are now able to finance the start of Project Mine in the USA. And as a result, uh, we were able to join this worldwide consortium. And, uh, and as a result, that led us to the finding of NEC1. NEC1 actually has a number of different functions. Uh, one of them is actually involved in the uh, repair of damaged DNA. And uh, this is interesting because at least one other gene has been identified for ALS, which is involved in, in DNA damage. It's also involved in uh, maintenance of the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is what gives the cells and uh, neurons in your body rigidity, and they have a number of different functions. And what's also interesting about this is we've identified uh, uh, several other genes that also are involved with the maintenance of the cytoskeleton. So again, it brings us more information of what is going wrong in ALS patients and how we can use this information towards therapeutic treatment.